uh, have time to work on some projects. I like to do this open source stuff in the graphics field. I started with uh, panorama photographs and uh, this was a pretty interesting uh, topic to, to stitch all the, the, the photos together. I think this was uh, shortly after 2000, 2002 or something like this. Um, we started different uh, projects uh, for stitching panoramas and uh, at th this time it was pretty new today. Uh, you can have it in each uh, photo camera. And um, we, uh, we, we, we started with uh, PD uh, uh, panorama tools or something like this. And uh, later we turned into the Hugin project which is a pretty successful uh, project to, to stitch photos and do HDR stuff and uh, stitch maps together so, so you can photograph uh, different pieces and have high resolution uh, image output. Yeah, and then uh, I thought this project was pretty uh, well running, so I thought the next step would be color management because the, the, the photos looked not so nice as uh, the, the, the results. We were stitched together, nice panorama spot. Uh, I thought, well, it should be better. And um, from, from, from the colors, from the appearance, from the hi highlight de detail and all this stuff. And so I wanted to, to edit these photos in a high resolution uh, imaging application and uh, looked at CinePaint, which was open source. It's an um, extended version of the GIMP. And um, with, uh, with, with uh, CinePaints, uh, at these times it was still called FilmGimp, uh, with, with the capability to handle 16-bit imagery and also floating point imagery, it was a pretty good uh, base to do stuff like color management, to do uh, artistic uh, imaging, and this is uh, still used today by some users for especially this stuff. Uh, I think now slowly, uh, arise these capabilities um, of high um, color resolution editing also in GIMP. So CinePaint might become a little bit more um, um, not so important, so it's fading away. That's no problem, it's great that we have this tool. Krita is another tool uh, to edit in high resolution uh, bit of. Well, and as I was in, in CinePaint, uh, we had, no, um, so, so Former maintainer Robin Rover had uh, contacted a, a student to do some work there, and he looked around. And she, he should work on color management uh, in CinePaint. So I was saying, yeah, I want this, and did some prototypes of this, and and then we decided, yeah, what to do now? Special, and um, we looked around which applications have already color management, and of wisely we looked at Photoshop and at Color Draw and all these uh, commercial things and then took over the, um, the idea behind how color management is structured in these applications and brought it to CinePaint. And I think now I come slowly to my talk. Then uh, I had the idea, this is, this is a good thing to have in one application, but uh, as, a, as an artist, I wanted to have it uh, instantly in, in one application and in the other application too, in, in the web browser and uh, maybe in a, in, a, in a vector graphics application and so on. So we had lots of communication between application and I thought it would be good to have parts of the KinePaint color management outside. So I started the Oiranos project. It's uh, the colored uh, Greek version of this um, project name. So that's why it stands there, these, these letters, these Greek letters. And um, and so I could not do it alone. We had, uh, as I said, talked with many uh, people. And so we founded, uh, or we started the Open ICC group. Okay. And this was in 2013. Oh, my English is not there. Uh, well, uh, Peter Pinel from the Scribers Project started a mailing uh, email list on uh, freedesktop.org, so uh, people could uh, could arrive there. We uh, we talked to um, to color consultants, to Adobe people, to ICC people, and um, 
to everyone who is interested. Of, co of course, we invited the GIMP people and the Inkscape people and uh, and all these these guys. And where where and uh, also Martin Maria and Quinn Gill, the the uh, most important uh, color management system authors uh, we have uh, in the open source world uh, to, to do the, the basic stuff. Yeah, and uh, we have uh, also a wiki for some um, basic information and um, and uh, an IRC channel. It's uh, not very loud there, so you can drop in and just uh, look around. Uh, and if you have a question, it's a good place to uh, to get it uh, easily to to people. Um, yeah, I said. Uh, we had uh, the, this, this uh, these, these guys uh, from from the ICC there, um, and well, I think it was well, well, a little bit scary. What is uh, what we have the ICC and what's this new thing, the open ICC? Well, the ICC is a uh, is a is a group which is um, not like the ISO. Uh, it's a standardization group for for uh, color management for for industrial. Uh, for, for the imaging industry. And uh, we are not working like ISO that they have an open uh, review process. They have a closed model in the beginning. So uh, to, to get into the party with the ICC, uh, you have to pay a fee and get become a member. And uh, then you can discuss with them on, on new standards and, and get things into the ICC specification. Um, and and so we had quite a demand to, to get more people inside. And so we started the Open ICC to, to, to open this, this kind of process. And at the moment, they are sometimes engaging in uh, discussions on Open ICC. And it's, I think, a, a good complementary thing, even though some people might think more of the specification process should go to Open ICC because uh, yeah, we have more comments on, on stuff, on proposals. Yeah, we have developers, users, where uh, consultants, uh, as I said, said uh, uh, rep representative, uh, and of course, uh, it's pretty open for everyone. Yeah, so we, we got, I don't know who else. Yeah, the. Um, where we discuss, uh, of course, color management stuff, um, the hot topics about printing, why does Gutenprint, for instance, has not the possibility to uh, to configure an ICC profile. It's a, it's a typical hot uh, topic. We have long tweets about this. And also display color management, uh, where to put the profiles and so on. And um, so people talk ab about this. Uh, we turn it uh, into proposals and uh, sometimes specifications. And then we put it on the on the wiki, uh, and uh, have at least a reference to what what uh, programmers can expect uh, how to to handle color management on Linux. And so we had already uh, many pr projects like Firefox. Uh, I think there was someone from Bratislava called Pixel, a small application. He also uh, used the specifications to uh, to get the monitor profile, to know where to find ICC installed ICC profiles and uh, to, to interact with the system. Uh, we are pretty poor at documentation, but we have some for maintainers. Uh, most frequent question is, are these profiles free uh, from the license uh, point of view? And so we have collected some information for them. Um, some announcements goes over the list, and of course we discuss uh, our events and activities, which are the Hackfest here in Brno uh, last uh, late autumn. It was a pretty cool uh, event, the first uh, kind of this with a get-together from people from all over the world. It's a pretty small group, 10 people around. But uh, we hacked some code, uh, we discussed lots of stuff, we compared operating systems, and this is also something I would like to have here in the talk. Um, and uh, so, uh, we get to learn more closely uh, each other and, and have uh, now better connections and more feelings for what we want to do and what we want to do together. Yeah, and um, we had ni uh, a nice guy appearing on, on the... Um, 
on the open ICC email list, uh, Jim Gettys, and he talked uh, pretty uh, boldly about end-to-end -end color management. And um, I think this was a pretty interesting uh, impression. So uh, from, from the beginning, there's, there, was, uh, there was the idea uh, in, in the room that uh, color management is nothing we, we can do in part. We, we can do uh, for one desktop or for one application or for, for one library. This is a thing we have to work uh, as uh, completely through our thing. It's maybe like uh, password management where you uh, cannot do it just for one application and then you have a circumvention to, to bypass it. It's, um, this, this would not work. So uh, the same is for, for color management. If you have too many ways and too many uh, things to intercept things, then, um, then you have a problem. So the end-to-end -end is from the input device, typical from the input devices, from camera scanners and so on, to the output devices, to the monitors, to, the, um, to your customers over the internet, to the, uh, to the printer. And this uh, kind of uh, colors uh, should be color managed. And well, I think, um, well, what, what means color management? Well, um, color management, as I mentioned, comes from the, uh, from the, from a strong industrial background. So the major founders are Microsoft, uh, Apple, Adobe, uh, Kodak, and, and uh, some, some uh, few, few faded away uh, company names. Uh, which, which founded this uh, with a strong uh, imaging background and a strong commercial background. So we was in, in, in the first part interested on uh, professional color management. Not just like uh, consumers do, but uh, like um, pre-press pre -press stu uh, studios do, uh, like printers do, and uh, like artists need. And um, with this uh, background, we have a strong opinion about how uh, colors need to be managed. And managed means uh, you, you need to know what, what happens there uh, uh, with, with your colors. You, you need to, to be pretty specific about, uh, about the interpretation of your colors, about the handover, and to get a grip on what happens uh, with your colors on the output side uh, when you deliver stuff. And uh, we were not very strong in the, in the workflow decisions because this is also the typical um, proprietary uh, uh, style of things. Uh, we, we have a pretty open specification. It's just a file format. It tells what the colors are, uh, which, which are the dis described by the ICC profile. And that's almost all. Some, some white papers are there to to describe a little bit about how to, uh, to, to build color management systems, and but it's not very much. Uh, so uh, Microsoft has its own view on, on color management, Apple has its own view, uh, and Linux community has many views on color management. So, um, well, but um, what I think uh, is, is, is pretty important for us as an open source and the Linux community is that uh, we also um, have had this, um, this, this great uh, idea that uh, people work together, that uh, this, this hand handing over of information uh, works for them. And this strong side is something uh, we, we can decide to, to throw away and uh, to say, yeah, okay, we are just for users, for, for consumers, and we want uh, that uh, that uh, the internet browser works uh, correctly and sufficiently have printing and a little bit of scanning, and well, that's enough for us. But uh, I think there's also a connection between these high-level professionals and uh, so the in between developers and the end cons consumers, because these professionals are often the creators, the content creators. The artists who start uh, uh, with, with something, with, with a picture or video sequence, and they want to get a message out 
to the customers or to the audience. And um, in between we have distribution, distribution channels, sometimes uh, very specialized uh, studios which does in between color grading or some kind of marketing. And um, this is a kind of ecosystem which works together. And uh, if you think about color management like something, yeah, we have just our consumer needs, then we maybe lose this, um, this uh, professional kind of input in our system. So I think um, my personal take is on this, uh, it's good to have these, the starting point and we should take it further and adapt it and um, yeah, we should do something with this and not ignore it. Okay, but uh, this is um, more in the... repeat your question uh, you want to empower the developers that they have always access to yes certainly yeah well I, I myself a developer and uh, I work in different projects so uh, it's typical that uh, people try to, to get the APs easy and uh, Maybe maybe you can compare with the RBCMS. It's a pretty complicated piece of software, mostly um, uh, doing s uh, f for us uh, the access to uh, to color measurement um, color measurement devices, and uh, to to get the, 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 the most basical things to produce uh, uh, at all ICC profiles. And uh, but the API is pretty complicated. It's low level stuff, and you have lots to do with this and. Uh, Later on, uh, Martin Mayer started the LCMS project, and it has a, has a pretty straightforward a API. You can have uh, very few calls and have your color conversion done, and, you and uh, he does in the background the, the checking, which is possible, what should, it should you do, which parts of the ICC profile, because the ICC profiles are complicated pieces of uh, information. And uh, then you, you are... Um, you can relax about these questions. And this, I think this uh, is a good thing. And if you want, you can go to a lower level API. Uh, but uh, uh, to have this high level API, it's a, it's a very important uh, thing. And so I think most color management systems are structured like this to make uh, things easy and to have um, high level APIs for, for stuff. Hope this is an answer to your question. <laughs> Course, yeah. I, th I think I think we have an idea uh, how to handle this and to ship uh, ICC profiles together with Deep and Print, or at least uh, to to ship it on request. Like uh, you have, the I think Phil Kampfeder or some someone from the Printing Guys has created uh, a system to um, to download 
uh, printer drive is on demand. And yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a big field uh, of interaction with many components, and it's pretty complicated. Yeah. So uh, I think, uh, as we had it already now, uh, questions are a nice thing. And the first question I have to you, do you know what is the ICC profile? Did, did you heard before this talk about, about this uh, term? Yeah, OK. So uh, s some people might not. Um, OK, uh, ICC profiles are mostly, uh, uh, it's, it's, an, it's in file format. Um, at, the, at the basic level, and it describes colors uh, based on the CIA, um findings about uh, a thing which is called a uh, standard uh, observator. And the standard observator is coded inside a, a table of, uh, of spectral values, uh, which you can see a uh, colored uh, graphical representation where this is. Um, um this is supposed how human, uh, normal human, which is why it's called standard, normal hu hu human people see colors and inter interpret uh, s uh, spectral sensitivities and turn it into color. And with this core definition uh, of a reference uh, to, to this SIA uh, specification, RCC profiles are able to connect with each other because you have some color space, whatever this is, uh, from a device or from an uh, artificial defined color space, you connect to the ZIA uh, specification, which is called PCS, profile connection space, and then you go to another space. And so you have uh, the possibility to go in this PCS and go out, and uh, this is what RCC profiles actually do at most. So you can attach uh, a profile to a to an image, uh, and, and you know the source, and of course the profile should fit to this source. And then uh, application is able to uh, turn this RCC profile information from, from, the, from the actual RGB numbers or CMYK numbers, which are just numbers, and turn it into the profile connection space and then convert to another color space. So, makes it sense? Okay, and this is pretty much the basic of RCC profiles. And so there are curves and metrics and tables and, and all this stuff inside. But if you uh, have understood uh, this uh, basic concept, I think you know the most about RCC profiles. Yeah, and um, as I said, we had in the Hackfest here in Bruno some pretty good analysis of, uh, of different desktops from different uh, operating system vendors. I think it's, uh, it's, it's good to look what others do and what we did in the past. Uh, we have a lot of experience uh, in, in how to handle things, how to interact with the customers and, and they get feedback and so on. And it's uh, something we, we should uh, build upon our, our own uh, color management systems. So what I have here is a, a printing dialog. Uh, let me think. Um, yeah, this is, I think this uh, standard, yes, yeah, the standard uh, HP printing dialog. And now you can help me a little bit. Uh, what I just, what for me is interesting, how many color related options are here inside? Can you count with me? Media type is already done. Yeah, and here lots of color options. Here the lower ones are only specific for some certain uh, kind of input, but still, um, yeah, quite one, two, three, four, maybe five. Yeah, and here's no, not color related. Yeah, here again, the color stuff. Again, two options about color. Yeah, and this was it. Okay, um, how many did you count? 
uh, pretty much, I think. And here we have uh, also inside, this is, uh, this is uh, close to, to, to the drivers of, of the device. This is uh, actually it's a, a video um, driver thing. Uh, and, and you see this uh, blue uh, highlighted, is this uh, with the, the beginner, yeah? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, here you have color range and you switch to limited cell. The, the driver does uh, some kind of color messing with, with your device. And uh, this, is, uh, this is stuff which is difficult, well, it's, it's outside of uh, normal color management, of, of ICT color management. And, but when we think uh, back uh, that we want end-to-end -end color management, we have this uh, to take into account because uh, when we have an input and an output, and in between change some little piece of the color chain, your ICC profile is worthless because an ICC profile is built upon, upon just a set of numbers and describe what it means uh, in, 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 in a kind of appearance, in a visual appearance for, for, the, for the human observer and um, practical for you as user. And um, if, we, if we mess around with this kind of stuff, we might have a problem and we, we don't know. This is a proprietary API from NVIDIA and in HP there are also lots of options we don't, we simply don't know. We don't collect all these kind of options just to uh, exclude some uh, accidental messing up of, of the color pipeline. Yeah. And uh, the reason why this uh, renders stupid stuff is because color management does not work. It does not work by default. It's just uh, something you can have in the application or you can have in, in even in the print in the printing driver. I've, I've seen such stuff that you have a, a tab and select the ICC profile. But uh, normally it doesn't work. Uh, we have here the a wide gamut display, and and I think this is a typical shopping situation. You look at the dress of the woman, maybe the hair color, because you want to buy some kind of product, and on each uh, representation things look different. This one is highly saturated. She has red color. This is uh, more uh, pastel color. And this maybe it's closest to the normal, just a little bit to blue. Uh, and if you, if, you, if you take this for, for shopping and uh, where are some, some other examples where you want to have reliable color management, then it's uh, this is a disaster because you, get, uh, you open the box and you don't get what you have seen on the screen. And that's... Uh, so this is a problem for, for, for online market sellers. And um, yeah, this is uh, uh, OS X, uh, OS 10 uh, printing dialog. I have opened, uh, oops. Sorry. I have opened the, the overview that you can see which uh, options are actually are for, for printing products. It's pretty much reduced and that's the, uh, how we try to uh, to handle color management uh, throughout the whole stack. We reduce options to the user. So uh, I can tell you in the, in the background, we have three actual three identifiers. There's a media type for printing. Um, there's a color space, and I think one third maybe for the resolution or something like this. So these three parameters you can change. We have seen in, in the format 10 parameters. And, and this, this uh, simplification uh, makes them able, uh, enables uh, this operating system or this color management system uh, to handle color in a more consistent way. But uh, if you look perhaps inside this one, printer features, you get uh, open, you, you open a can of worms because where you have all these uh, options from the PBD, this is the printer description um, file, and you have gamma and magenta and all this stuff inside. So the idea is good, but uh, especially with Guten Prince drivers on OS X, well, repeatedly customer um, customer problems where we have uh, we have difficulties to to get it um, 
reli working reliably. So professionals are not really um, happy with, with this situation. Well, it is an approach. It works for most uh, drivers, but on the professional level, it's not so, not so good. Yeah. I'm, um, what we see, uh, um, I go on back. What we see, uh, because of, of this uh, of this situation under Windows and under um, and under uh, OS X is um, well. Here is only the, the hook inside this uh, dialog through the PBD, but um, on Windows we have it very broadly render extensions. Uh, we have some special tweaks, uh, some special. Uh, ICC mode for, for, for a printer, for, for consumers, where you can select uh, one ICC profile and all the color options are uh, grayed out and you have no access to them. But it's really random specific and not on the system level. And uh, so what we can conclude out of this is it's not solved. It's simply not working. Do we want uh, that HP places as a, a, a button that we can choose uh, Adobe RGB or sRGB or whatever. No, we, we cannot even uh, hook in an uh, own ICC profile, even if you have some me measurement device. It's not an option for us. And uh, we can easily change stuff in between and uh, then we don't know what was uh, the original uh, state of uh, how it should work. There's one application on the Linux desktop uh, which has uh, done it right, and most um, RIPs, uh, raster image processors on uh, Apple, on, on Windows, and also on Linux, do go the same way. We uh, exclude all in-between steps uh, from, the, from the actual uh, input image. We, we receive it with the ICC profile uh, assigned, and then we exclude every possibility that uh, someone can intercept color uh, and, and, and change uh, the colors. And we mostly must write their own uh, print drivers uh, ju just to have this control. And this software is uh, much, much appreciated by, uh, by color professionals because we, we get per, uh, per button click uh, a result which is pretty reliable. And uh, we don't have this, this kind of expertise now in the operating system because we go outside to have uh, projects to do this. Turbo Print is on, li on Linux. Uh, I think Harlequin Rip uh, is on both OS X and Windows and uh, GNG software and so on. And, and users, uh, professional users need this software. Printers and uh, prepass studios need this software to do their daily work. And uh, on Linux, uh, so the application I like to mention, the open source application is Photo Print. It has um, taken the, the options from Gutenprint all into account. It's a, tri a native driver to, to uh, front end to the native driver of, uh, of Gutenprint to the, to the printers. And uh, all color options are assigned together with the ICC profile to one uh, configuration preset. And you chose not uh, just a uh, profile, you, chase, you chose all the um, color state of your printer when you choose some kind of, of color surrounding for, for gray print for printing, for instance, or for CMYK printing, or if you have another uh, configuration. And this is the way uh, which actually works. It's just a small project, uh, not much work is done on it in, in, in recent years, but uh, it's a pretty good one. I think you can see again. So uh, I think we should we, we could take this model inside uh, the operating system and then we would have a chance to get these uh, professional people back into, uh, into the normal uh, color workflows and also ha uh, uh, have something from their experience and from their expertise. Yeah, this all applies to, uh, to all kind of, uh, of uh, of imaging devices to the same printing, scanning, and still photography. Yeah, still photography is an exception because we have the uh, DCP kind of profile, and this is closely related to the uh, DNG specification from Adobe. But for this plane, uh, we had uh, started, uh, I will later come on to this, uh, 
uh, a project uh, for printing, there is something done in the Konomi printing stack um, and, and their user interface. <coughs> and uh, I have uh, we have created some specifications for how to to make a device that um, that the printer description uh, has something or the option in the printer description has something to do with actual color. This is, uh, is our hook, our grip to to get more control to this. And uh, for scanning, uh, there was some uh, some some ideas uh, around how to. Uh, oops, wrong button. Uh, we had some ideas around how to um, how to handle color options there, and so for the graph theory, well, it's mostly dominated by the GCP RCC program. Yeah, and um, one project we had in 2008 by a Google Summer of Code uh, student uh, was how to do color management on the GPU. This is like it works on the OS 10 uh, platform here. Uh, we have instant color correction. Yeah, GPUs are pretty powerful, and uh, there's a special OpenGL extension, I think it's called uh, 3D Texture Lookup, so you can have um, on the GPU a hardware accelerated uh, interpolation loop uh, call, which, um, which does from, from an RGB to an RGB color conversion, and it's pretty fast. Uh, and very few power con consumption. So you can run video and all stuff on the desktop uh, with without any delay. And this was a proof of concept because Combit to know um, itself as project is only uh, uh, maintained by uh, by um, Canonical and um, we changed in between the APIs. Uh, it, it still runs on some computers, but um, it's not much useful anymore. We had uh, started last year a Google Summer of Code project to bring this uh, concept into KVIN. And uh, this was pretty successful. It's now in KDE uh, in, in the last release uh, 4.10. And we hope under other window managers uh, uh, take this as an uh, impulse to, to do similar things. Um, and we have already this, the, the lively discussions on the uh, valent um, community about color correction. I have seen in yesterday, uh, Pekka Paalen has um, submitted some patches to do subsurface, um, uh, to, to introduce a subsurface API, which is a pretty good thing to do um, region-based color correction and what we also do here. Um, so the, the concept is pretty close and the technical means are not too far. So we can hope color management in Valent will be become reality. And I hope that this kind of conceptual uh, project has helped uh, to make to make the proof of concept uh, say that it's actually all doable. Yeah, this is about future. One thing more. Okay, um, for, the, for the printing stack, we have some ideas, but uh, we, are, we are surrounded about PDF um, being the, 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 the transport format for, for printing, and um, which goes um, with a very, uh, very well-defined uh, uh, printing format. And inside PDF, there's the, the possibility to attach an, um, an output profile, which is called the output intent here. And uh, this one can be interpreted, and in some uh, conditions, it must be interpreted as uh, a decided uh, um, intention, how the user wants to see this, uh, this uh, document being printed. And um, we have uh, thought about how to to make this reality, and it needs much more interaction with with printing dialogues. Uh, there is one pro prototype in Krita actually um, working in, in a separate branch. It's not very well integrated, and uh, we need support for this inside the stack. And then we can very cleanly 
um, assign an ICC profile from the user selection throughout the printing time and hope that uh, it goes script and then which is color engine LCMS, mostly LCMS, can do the, uh, the actual stuff inside and then we get uh, what we want on, on, on the chat and have a, a user control. The other control is the server side control. Cup server has the PBDs and inside the PBDs where are um, where, where can ICC profiles be set specified. So uh, this needs uh, much work. And well, how do we get the ICC profiles? Well, Richard Hughes has started this project about uh, open source hardware uh, measurement device, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty cheap uh, relative to, to other things. Uh, cheap means, um, yeah, you can try it. It's nice to have, but most people say, yeah, okay, I have learned it and um, maybe I need now a more expensive device. Um, it has limitations, serious limitations, like all these cheap ones. Yeah. Um, but uh, even this one, how many people ca uh, uh, care about buying such stuff? Would, would you buy actual uh, color measurement device to, to help have uh, accurate and uh, consistent color on your monitor? Some would do, yeah. Yeah, I see. But would you come to this talk, and uh, so it's not surprising, but most people do not even know what RCC profile is, do not even know what, what it means consistency, because we, we see the color and it's okay for them and we have no, not much of an idea. So I think it's a, it's a really nice step in, in a good direction, but it's more for professional and, and uh, more engaged users who, who want uh, to really care by, by the hobby or by the artist uh, attitude or something like this. But for most people, it's out of scope. 99% of users won't use a color management device because they are scary about this word already. So what we get, we need to get RCC profiles to users. It's pretty important uh, for the system. And we have thousands of profiles um, for, for this different kind of models of displays, of printers, of scanners, and so on. And I think the, only, the, the most cheap might be a taxi. So we have started, um, I think, two years ago, a project to, to bring um, the taxi uh, online and to have a repository of ICC profiles which uh, make it uh, able for users to download an ICC profile which fits to their, um, to their uh, actual use devices. But we, we have at, at the moment some, some 200 or uh, 250 monitor profiles, not much. Uh, we need more support for for scanners and for, for printers too and, and for other maybe cameras and so on and this is something yeah this needs much more work and integration but I hope this this will solve this 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 kind of, of problem we see at the moment that we have a disconnect of people who have a manage a color measurement device and have the, the knowledge about how to use it and many people who simply don't know. Yeah. And if you have questions, I'm afraid we have to move it later on because it's end of the time for this talk. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>